Welcome back to Musically Speaking, and thank you for joining us in such numbers for our last episode two weeks ago. Uh, I hope that all of you who've tuned in are doing well and, and that you're staying safe, and I thank you for being here with us today. It's great to know that you're all there in, in the virtual world. My name is Alexander Shelley. I'm the Music Director of Canada's National Arts Centre Orchestra. The orchestra is based at Canada's flagship arts institution, the National Arts Centre, just opposite Parliament in the nation's capital of Ottawa. Uh, I, however, am speaking to you from my home in London, uh, England, uh, where I have been with my family since the beginning of lockdown. Uh, to our NAC community, I want to tell you how much the orchestra and I continue to miss performing for you and how much we're looking forward to celebrating live music with you again as soon as possible. And to everyone else, a very, very warm welcome. I'm so grateful that you've joined me here today uh, live as we try to get, create a bond in the virtual world. Uh, Musically Speaking is a bi-weekly hour-long live session in which I welcome stars of the classical music world to tell us about themselves, to talk about their life and art and music uh, and the world and uh, to field not just my questions uh, but hopefully lots of your questions too. Uh, in the previous episodes I've spoken to James Ennis and Gabriella Montero and we've had some fabulous uh, live questions throughout so please don't be shy, share any questions you have for us and uh, my wonderful assistant Kelly Simmons is producing the whole thing behind the scenes and is fielding everything and appears as Alexander Shelley in the chat box will feed them uh, to me as we go. Uh, I'll try to include as many questions as I can but please apologize uh, my, my apologies in advance if I don't get to them uh, all. Uh, so I'm so excited to welcome today's guest who I think it's fair to say uh, already counts despite her very tender age as a Canadian legend. Uh, she's originally from Fredericton in New Brunswick. Uh, she's an extraordinarily versatile performer, a classical singer who's graced the world's finest stages in both concert and opera. She's also uh, has a sensational array of other genres that she sounds sensational in from jazz and funk to blues and gospel and much, much more. She's a best-selling author. She's a Juno Award winner. Winner. She's a Grammy nominee, a regular presence on radio and television. Uh, and she famously sang the Olympic hymn uh, for a global audience at the opening ceremony of the 2010 Winter Olympic Games in Vancouver. And she's done all of this while twice recovering from open heart surgery. Uh, she is a force of nature. She's a much loved collaborator and friend of the NAC Orchestra. And I'm thrilled uh, to ask you to join me as an ambulance goes by in, in offering a very, very warm welcome to our guest, Misha Berger Gossman. Hi, Misha. I love that the ambulance went by. It's like, I know. She's on the run. <laughs> she's, tried to, she's tried to join Alexander at his house and is getting exactly. right. <laughs> exactly. How are you doing? Where are you speaking to us from? I'm in Nova Scotia. I am in the recording studio. Uh, I live in the Annapolis Valley mm. and uh, it is gorgeous. And I have to say, it keeps me grateful. I can imagine. You know, to live in such I a can imagine. And you've been safe and well during lockdown, your family too, I hope. Yeah, I mean, we have our bubble. You know, I'm, I'm more um, fortunate than most because, you know, I have my two young sons and they are most of the time a blessing. Um, and my mom. Uh, and you know my sister and my two, and her two girls live with my mom, so we kind of have a large, um, large-ish uh, yeah. kind of bubble. And my recording engineer is inside that bubble because, frankly, I have to keep producing. I, yeah. I, I can't. You you know how it is. You just you can't sit still. You have to do something. You have to feel useful. It gives you hope. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And I want to talk about the following in depth later, but. You had your season wiped out in 2019 because of heart surgery, and now 2020 is as good as gone because of coronavirus. How are you like reacting to all of this? Like, well, first of all, you have to maintain your joy, okay? Right. Joy is not some circumstantial emotion that comes up when things happen to be good. You have to fight for it. You have to fight for it just as much as you have to like abstain against negativity and toxic thinking and the rhetoric. like. I should be panicking, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm just like, well, I have my health. My children are healthy and thriving, and we'll probably cure all of this, by the way. They're five and seven, so stay tuned. And but you are being very proactive. We'll, we'll come to it later. It's actually amazing all the stuff that you're doing uh, proactively to make sure you're out there for your audience and, and growing your audience. It's really, it's really amazing. But you know, you have to make the lemonade from the lemons. Like you can't just let them rot. You know what I mean? They yeah. can get the best of you if you don't use them. Absolutely. So that's kind of my philosophy now. 
Fantastic. Well, listen, I want to talk in the course of the next hour, which I know will fly by, about your childhood, your hometown, your church, those heart surgeries, and how all of that kind of formed who you are now. Um, but I wanted to just start off with a quick fire round of questions. It's like either or questions. Okay, okay I'm kind of fun, cheeky way for our audience to get to know you. So here we go. Super fast. The first thing yeah. that comes to mind. And you, you get a veto if you don't like a question. So here we go. Sunlight or moonlight? Sunlight. Digital or analog? Analog. City or countryside? Country. Head or heart? What was that? Head or heart? Head. Mountaintop or fireside? Mountain. Listen. Although I hate the cold. <laughs> right. It could be a warm mountaintop. Could yeah. it be a fire on a mountaintop? Yeah, I like it. Um, uh, how about listen or talk? Listen. Yeah. And you I mean, that's what I should say, but talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that. When I thought about asking you the question, I thought you'd say one and then maybe actually, yeah. Um, okay, philosophy, you prefer it Eastern or Western? Huh, I'm not choosing. Okay, cool. Old Testament or New? Oh, New. No. Okay. No, no. Ella or Billy? Oh, Ella. Ella. Sing it. Yeah, Ella or Aretha? Oh, I don't, I'm not choosing. Okay, fine. <laughs> They're um, both in the grave with me. Both. Yeah. <laughs> Cat like, or dog? Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Cat or dog, very simple one. Hey, hey Jesse. You know, like off with yeah, them all exactly. in there. <laughs> Whoops, I'm sorry. That was so exciting, my, my computer twisted. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the next one was cat or dog. Very simple. Well, I don't like that dogs eat their own poo. Hmm. That's like a real deal breaker. I, I have a cat, but I'm contemplating a dog because I think it'll teach my children responsibility, even though I'm pretty sure the dog is going to end up being mine. <laughs> it's it's going to end up being what, sorry? The dog will probably end up being mine, but we're currently <laughs> flirting with the idea. <laughs> okay, there's a few more left. So save or spend? Oh, shoot. Well, I got what, what's zero plus zero. <laughs> That's pretty much what I'm working with. Oh, I like it. Um, Michael Bublé or Michael Jackson? Oh, Michael Jackson. I mean, he's older. And Bless Michael him. Michael Jackson or Michelangelo? Well, Michelangelo, if we're going on that premise. Because sure. he's older, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? You gotta okay. use the test of time. Yeah, true. Um, okay, if you weren't a musician, what would your dream job be? Probably actor, but it wouldn't be a dream job. It would still be agonizing. Really? But I think I would love to be okay with the solitude of writing. Okay, but this is your dream job, what you're doing. Probably, but I would need some kind of an outlet. Like it would be maybe preaching, you know? Mm -hmm. Lord knows now that I'm a parent, I am very... I mean, I'm very comfortable with the fact that I can preach. Right. Um, but yeah, probably okay. something I, I hate to say performance oriented because mm -hmm. I really love being alone. Mm -hmm. But this is a question that I know we'll delve into deeper, but it's yeah. like there's the calling mm -hmm. and then there's the natural way of being. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I am not necessarily naturally called mm -hmm. or I, I, I am called, but I'm not natural to the state. Right. And so whatever gap exists between my natural state and my calling, mm -hmm. God fills it. That's So I just won't, I, I just, my life is his. Yeah. But your natural state is actually not one of performance. Oh, if I never had to put mm -hmm. on a lash again, <laughs> I would, but at the same time. Um, but, you know, I find that very interesting because I. I so ahead, many of my friends in the industry who seem like the, the the most charismatic performers are actually the ones who, when you ask them, they're not, you know, they, they don't have to be on stage. And it's kind of something that they make happen. And, and you would counter that. You're so charismatic on stage, of course, right? So it's yeah. a surprise to hear that, I find. Yeah, and I quite, um, I'm quite uncomfortable with fame, right? Mm -hmm. I want power. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, I, I want to be able to make decisions that affect real policy for generations to come for the better. Yeah. 
Mm. I don't need people to know who I am. Right. And yet it's a requirement and it's a sort of marker for success in our industry. Mm -hmm. But we all know people who toiled and slaved and are much better mm. at our jobs than we are. But mm. they just didn't have that thing that connected the dots. Right. Right. right? So it's like, we all agonize in certain areas of our careers, no matter what we do. It's like, you might own a business, but you're bad at books. You might be great at selling things, but you can't get up before one. You know, you might be great at a lot of things, but there's always going to be something that's going to challenge you. And it's important that there is because nobody's perfect. And where is the space for God if we can do everything? Mm, absolutely. Okay, we went off track. That was supposed to be a one word answer, but that's fine. Um, what, what job would you be least good at? Garbage collecting. Really? Oh, I hate Which garbage. aspect? The... Like touching it, being associated okay. with it, having to tell people <laughs> to do it. I, okay. I respect so much the people that make it seem like our garbage is some kind of a magical yeah. thing that disappears. Like yeah. that's why, that's the worst part of being self-partnered is that right. you are the one, until your children are old enough, who has to assemble that mess? Oh, I, I hate it. I, I just, pl uh, plumber? Yeah. Plum. And I okay. don't need to go into why. Right. Fair enough. Fair enough. I love it. That's why they're so expensive as well, because it's an essential service that, you know. Oh, okay. I will pay. I will pay. Thank God for plumbers and garbage, garbage collectors and first responders. I mean, come uh, yeah. on, line workers. I know. You are doing all the business. It's a beautiful. It's a beautiful moment every week here in London. It'll happen in a couple of hours here, 8 p.m. every Thursday night. The whole city erupts in applause. Um, everybody opens their windows, sticks their heads out. They hit their pots and pans and applause the, uh, the National Health Service and the, the first responders here. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. I knew I'd seen that. I'd seen a video that they're doing that. And now in Falmouth, it would be me, the right. beaver on the lake, <laughs> the eagle down the way. And my sons with the pots, but we listen. My husband, yep. their baby daddy, is a first responder, and so right. it is so incredibly important. Mm -hmm. oh, I mean, I, I there's no words for Absolutely. how grateful we all are for what they're Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. Okay, there's only a couple more of these these quick fire questions left. So, okay. if you could be anyone in history, who would that be? Jesus. Thought so. Favorite hobby. Eating. Eating. <laughs> Gr greatest fear. But it's hard because. Right, that's true. Uh, yeah, it's hard because yeah. you can't do it all the time. Turns out it's not good for you. That's true. Uh, greatest fear. Not actualizing my fullest potential. Okay, last three. They all belong together. If you had to, to go to a desert island, which book, which movie, which piece of music? Bible. Mahler five. What was the last one? I don't uh, think movie, that. movie. <laughs> what? Which movie. Oh. Well, I'd probably have to take Castaway so I can figure out how to get off. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Okay, so this, uh, bravo, they were beautiful answers, thank you. Um, this musical speaking, musically speaking, is hosted on NAC Performs, uh, Canada Performs, excuse me, NAC, Canada Performs website, uh, uh, platform. Um, and we're gonna share uh, excerpts from your live performances with the audience today. Uh, and you and I have prepared a little something, especially for uh, today's uh, chat, which I'm looking forward to later. Um, and last night, some of our viewers will have received one of our NACO Home Delivery concerts. Um, these are performances that, uh, that are from our live archives and we send out every week and, week. and last night's featured you uh, singing so beautifully Im Abendrod by Richard Strauss. I don't know if you, you knew that. And you, you, you introduced Im Abendrod with a spiritual. You sang it a cappella, if you remember. And then at the end of the final note, the, the Strauss begins. It was just a, a beautiful idea and you realized it so exceptionally. Um, and I'd like to start today's performances with something that is not a million miles away. So it's music by... Uh, Richard Wagner, who is a great inspiration for, for Richard Strauss, of course. And it's an excerpt from his uh, Wesendonk Lieder. And I was wondering if you could just give us a little introduction to the excerpt we're about to, to hear. The first sentence um, of Träume, Dreams, by Richard Wagner, the text is by Mathilde Wesendonk. And just a little tiny sidebar, Mathilde Wesendonk was the wife of one of Wagner's major patrons. He had an affair with her, took her poetry, and left her high and dry. Wagner, not a great guy, everybody knows that. But the music is exquisite. And 
it there are woven light motifs that he would t take later on and use in Tristan and Tisolde. It's it's kind of a kind of study on what that composition would become. And you know, it's a bite-sized Wagner, pretty mm -hmm. much what I can handle right now. I don't know if I'll ever be mature enough to, you know, do a whole five hour with seven intermission opera, <laughs> but this is gorgeous. And this is the only recording for which I've been nominated for a Grammy like as a soloist. I've been on like eight, nine other nominations. I don't count because if my face isn't on the cover and this is with <laughs> Franz Belzermischt in the Cleveland Orchestra, which we all know, you know, speaks volumes. It's just, you know, it's, it's amazing. We could all aspire to it. I know you know Franzi. I know you know a lot of people in that orchestra. It is one of my favorite places. Now in the category that I was nominated in was Cecilia Bartoli. Oh. Nobody loses to Chichel. <laughs> you just stand next to her and go, girl, go. Girl, <laughs> she's exquisite. She's my favorite. I, I just, I can't say enough. I was just so thrilled that I was even said in the same, yeah. in the, in the same mouth as her. Oh. Well, that's and, very modest. And I remember I was in, I was giving a recital at, at Spivey Hall in Atlanta, the day that the Grammys were on. So I couldn't have gone anywhere. But I, I just remember thinking, I own that album of Cecilia's. And I was making plans, and I'm not saying I would have given the Grammy, but I'm just saying I would have written her a nice note. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't need my note. So Time <laughs> is the last of song in the five song Wagner cycle that you're about to hear. And you're hearing it here, uh, I think it's an excerpt from Medici TV. And exactly. we were at, is it, we're at La Nodière, no, no, we're at- um, uh, uh, Demain Forger. Domaine Forgé, that's right. Yeah. So the Domaine Forgé, and then players from Domaine Forgé, and I remember it was so, I mean, I used to sweat a lot when I sang anyway, because I'm a sweater. But I remember thinking, in the middle of the Toima, God, it's hot. <laughs> it was okay, because it was the last song. Fantastic. So that's the Toima, but it's all that I've been in my mind. To say what beautiful, tell me what beautiful dreams hold my senses enthralled. That's the first. Just, Kelly, sense. could you roll the tape, please? Here we go. <laughs>
So um, that was the Orchestre de la Francophonie, uh, Jean-Philippe Tremblay and Michel Gossman with a Träume von der Wesendog Lieder by Richard Wagner. Um, and if you want to hear more of that, you can go to Medici TV where you can see the whole concert. Uh, but also I have to recommend a resource that I've spent a lot of time on uh, over the last uh, week or so, and that's planetmisha.com. So Misha set up this site where you can explore the, as she put it, omnivorous uh, nature of her musicality, um, uh, speaking, uh, teaching, uh, singing in all different styles, and you can find uh, more excerpts like that. It's, it's really a great, great resource, so uh, planetmisha.com. And I always find that, that, that song so tantalizing. As you, as you mentioned, he's testing the waters for Tristan and Isolde, and you hear exactly that music turn up. And he's also playing with this, this idea, this sentiment, the dream world versus the real world, night versus day, and that the, the sort of potentially Schopenhauer-influenced mm -hmm. metaphysics of it, right? And, and I want to take that idea of him exploring metaphysics and philosophy and spirituality and take that as our watchword as we go back to your childhood. Because I think, as with most of us, your story ch starts in childhood, but I find even more than most people, when one, when one looks at who you are now, I want to just unpack your first years from your from your perspective. So could you talk us through Fredericton and your, your childhood? Um, you know, I had a really choice childhood. Like it was choice trauma, choice bullying, choice giftedness. There was never anything inconsequential. My father was an athlete who had had heart attacks early, who then transitioned as a black man into the CBC. And all of the things and hijinks ensued. He had a wonderful long career of 33 years with the CBC. And I grew up knowing that I was kind of nestled in this community, in the community of our church, in the community of, well, we only listen to CBC. And on Saturday afternoons, they had Saturday afternoon at the Met. And we listened to that. And those were my pop stars. We did not listen to any secular music in our house. We barely listen to secular music in my house now. And I understand why my father did it because what goes in is what comes out. And so she and my mother and my father put me in voice lessons and I had the same lineage, the same lineage of voices. It was Diane Wilkins who taught or knew of, well, I was taught then by her mother, Mabel Doke, but I started with David Steves who was the music director of my church and I started piano, voice, and then later on I would take organ lessons. And for the longest time, I thought I would be a pianist. I worked hard at it. I sweat bullets from it. I lost hair. I threw up. I thought that's just what you had to do. Mm. I just thought you just, that's what you wanted to do. That was living the dream. Just mm. no, your bowels don't work. You can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 10. Yeah. Um, and I see that in my son. You know, I see his tenacity in the way that he's like, this is how it has to go or life as I know it is over. <laughs> you know, so it's is, like, he, is he musical? I, yeah. Well, who cares? I mean, right. that he could be, he might not be, but he, come hell or high water, he will make himself musical if he's not. <laughs> that's just the thing that's about him. But, you know, my parents really honed that characteristics in it, that characteristic in me. They mm. really kind of pointed it in the direction. First, I was a speed skater. Then I was a tight head in the scrum playing rugby. But I was always singing and playing the whole time. And mm. I, they knew that I had uh, an outlet was necessary. They knew an outlet was necessary for me for my aggression because, you know, of the... I had been abused sexually early. I had all this not kind of not pent up, but it was not something that was shameful. It was just a thing that happened that could have residual effects later on. And it was the same with like being bullied. It was the same with and they you know, knew and they they wanted to help you find an outlet. Well, you just want to punch something, and so they provided things for me to punch. They, I could go fast. She was streaming in my speed skating. I could go hard in the scrum, just pushing and grunting and punching and pulling. Like I had a lot of places where I could work out the stuff that wasn't working. Mm -hmm. And then music was there at the end. Like, and I was yeah. just good at it. I was just really good at it. I love it. I still love it. I still love how the twists and turns in the corners in my brain are all formed around this beautiful classical music art form. And mm. my singing technique is connected to, you know, my childhood, my adolescence, my early mm. 20s, my divorce, my children, my all of it, like all throughout that, my voice has been here. She mm. is chance to turn and moody, <laughs> faithful and beautiful. So and I, 
Has she changed a lot, do you think? Well, like me. Yeah. Yeah. I think the motivation, but I think the timbre, I real. I, I mean, I know that like a family line, like a, mm. um, a resemblance, I can mm. see her thread, you know, the mm. kernel of what my voice sounds like. Mm. Um, but I associate memories, you know, when somebody plays something that I don't recognize and I know it's me, I, mm. fi I find that the height of confusion and I can't remember that it happened because I always yeah. associate a memory with it or what I was wearing, or maybe my bra came undone, or I was like, I tripped on stage, or, you know, something yeah. that happened, or the cell phone oh. went off, or, you know, Days and Dawn Theater, funnily enough, that we just played. Mm. I, every time, well, every major time, a cell phone goes off, or, or something cataclysmic happens. <laughs> I did it at Wigmore Hall, cell phone went off. Uh, mm. I stopped, the so I just stopped, and I turned to Eustace, and I and my pants, and it just was like, Everything's fine. Everything's fine. We said not a thing to each other, but you couldn't ignore it. You know, we we more hearts like a box. Yeah, yeah. You know, shut in by conservatism, and it's just <laughs> like <laughs> they're doing their best. God bless them, and I really love them. And I just, it's just one of those places that you walk in and your your breath is immediately taken away, and you're and not sure if it's name. Well, it's, or it's beautiful. Right. <laughs> you're not sure. Sure. But, but that's so funny. What you? Excuse no, me. Carry on. Then. No, no. Oh, no it, Montreal Symphony, lights go out, like power outage, days and donk later. And then the other time I did them, Vienna, someone in the audience fainted. Oh no. Uh, low blood sugar, not me, she's great singing. Yeah, I'm just ah. saying, it, it's just the days and donk leader carry with it some kind of weird thing. So I love programming them just to see what's going to happen yeah. next. Yeah. No, so no, it was. No, 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 no. You should do it with money. Don't do it with me. Yeah, no, we should do it. I love it. And, and, but you remind me of a, of, a, of a story when you talk about listening back to yourself singing and sometimes you don't recognize it and then you connect to it. And my, my, my father, who's a mu musician, he, he's recorded so many albums and he, he has, as far as he's concerned, a famously bad memory for things. He always says that of himself, I have a bad memory. But we have these situations. Sometimes he'll listen to a piece and I go, that's lovely. I think I've played that. And then he gets the end of the recording on the radio. And that was, that was Howard Shelley doing this. And he's like, oh, yeah, that was my recording. And, you know, it happens when you've done enough. You just forget about your own, your own story. Well, but, you know, those guys that, that um, record that, like, you've got to think that, like, um, Kissin or Life Olfe, Ansnes, you know, these pianists mm -hmm. that do these, the, these massive concertos, record yeah. them. And it is, Life Ophi has gone back and started recording some of the Beethoven's. I'll go back. Yeah. I'll go back yeah, and yeah. the Basing Dog. You know, Absolutely. You know, I, I yeah. think I have yet, you haven't asked me this question, but thank you for asking me what I'd like to record next. I would, <laughs> would like to do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's right? Do it's it. the one thing that I've sung the most, that I have the most to say about, that has yet to be committed to a recording. Rit Rit yeah, it's funny. That I feel like I've done enough with it that what mm. I have to say is important. It's four last songs. I mm. still feel, you know, like there's time marinating and I've been singing those for 20 years. Mm. But yeah, maybe, maybe. Not, I'm ready. Yeah, yeah. Be the next Let's one. do it. Was, was there ever a question that you might go into a different style of music or was it always classical for you? Never, never. It wasn't even a, an option. Right. My father worked for the CBC. It right. was a classical music tradition in my church. When Diane yeah, yeah. Hawkins, uh, the the music teacher of my elementary school, remember back when we had those elementary schools, mm -hmm. music teachers, um, said to my father, you know, she has a real like aptitude for pitch matching and mm -hmm. has a fearless stage. I think they might be you know, consider putting her in voice lessons. Um, and she also had like this special kind of honor choir. And I was in that choir for, for the whole twelve years of my education and my public school education. And singing in choirs is the bomb. It is the thing that you can do for your kids that will set them up most, I think, for a career in life, right? Learning to blend is a life skill. Absolutely. So I cannot remember the question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, uh, I was asking about whether you ever thought about going in another musical direction but you answered it oh yeah you said actually no, no. no but, and it's my it's my assumption because 
because of where you went later, because of how you, 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 your avarice and you, you kind of uh, at home in so many different styles. But I want to ask you because, because time is going to run away with us. This, this question I want to ask you, we, we haven't touched on your, um, on your faith very much yet, but I know that it's, it's at the core of your, your being. And I have a question that I, I've, I've never asked you in person. I've always wanted to, to discuss with you because it, it generally interests me with people who have, you know, strong belief systems. Music can, uh, can be seductive. You can have a role or you can have a song or a text that actually you don't believe in personally, that it contradicts your beliefs. Um, and it's an imperfect analogy, but like asking a vegan to cook a meat, meaty meal, you know, have you ever, have you ever as, as a person of deep faith, being confronted with a song or a role where you've said, you know what, ethically, morally, religiously, I can't engage with that. It depends on who's asking, first of all. You know, Michael Tilson Thomas has written a piece for me called Four Playthings, Four Preludes on Playthings of the Wind. And it is a medium for me that he saw for me. Mm. Now that we know each other so well, mm. and he presents these songs to me, some of the subject matter, I know he's niggling with me. I know he's trying to see, I know mm. he knows how I feel about certain things because yeah. we are tight and he wants to see if I'll do it. And of course I'll do it. Of course I'll do it. My God is big enough for anything that conflicts with my beliefs. Now I'm not going to be singing about child murder. You know, there are some things that are just, you know what I mean? I'm not going to be singing about, you know, racist, bigotry. Like nobody's calling me yeah. for that. But nobody's yeah. calling me for that. Of you know, no, so. it, it, be, absolutely. Yeah. But you know, when, you know, Margaret Atwood and I are talking and we talk a lot and I adore her, but I know that our systems of belief are not the same. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't bother me. And it's the same when something comes from a source, especially if it's misunderstood. And mm -hmm. I'm called to make it clear for people. Mm -hmm. I'm the person to call for that. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I fancy myself a lovely communicator <laughs> and I don't mind fielding questions that are difficult and well, I, 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 I say again well i was going to say it's what the world needs more of now is that is to, to respect that you can have a firmly held belief and that someone else can have it and they, you can still just talk and find each other interesting and respect those beliefs and and you know have a great discourse you know we and we all are. know this but it needs to be shouted from the rooftops nowadays i find yeah because the ignorance is real like the darkness is real but mm -hmm. light shows up mm -hmm. and darkness cannot be there. And conversations mm -hmm. that keep going are a form of light. Like you mm -hmm. really, there is no peace where there's no dialogue. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that people have open ears, especially Christians. Oh my mm -hmm. goodness, open your ears and close your mouths. <laughs> All right, listen, so in terms of closing your mouth, let's open your mouth again and listen to some <laughs> music. Um, I want to, you know, we, we talked about your, your classical roots, your dad at CBC, and I alluded to the fact that you, you know, have, have gone in other directions later on, as well as, as maintaining your, your, your classical chops, which are incredible. Um, and this is an example of the, what we're going to play now of, of you going in that other direction. So this is, um, this is a, 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 another Canadian icon, and uh, I think she was present when you sang this. This is a song by Joni Mitchell, and maybe you could just give us a very brief introduction and then Kelly will roll the tape. Oh, first of all, thank you so much, Kelly, for all your technical direction. This is fantastic. I could never yeah. <laughs> um, this was probably the biggest thing I'd done in my career up until this point. Mm -hmm. So it, you say perhaps Joni Mitchell was there. Well, she was like literally like two and a half feet in front of me, seated, you know, I could probably, I could have, you know, I could have thrown her, I could have passed a J to Joni Mitchell, like she was that close. <laughs> and next to her, as if that weren't awesome enough, was James Taylor. Now, Shaka Khan was backstage and I would run into her as I was coming, like, it was just insane. I was the little girl from the North Side of Fredericton singing both sides now, and I was just thinking, now would not be the time to screw up the words, Bruger Gosman. Well, I just kind of like Gosman, right? What yeah. that? No, it was Bruger Gosman. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, and I did the arrangement with a wonderful man named Lou Pamonte, but I, was, I would go on to create an even larger arrangement that Aaron Davis and I would create and put on 
uh, my my first kind of non-classical CE, I've got a crush on you. So I lived, I lived with this piece, and then Aaron would go on and he would orchestrate it, and we've done it in Helsinki and San Francisco Symphony and all over the place, and it started here. Fantastic. Well, we're going to get Kelly to roll the tape. We'll, we'll listen to a couple of minutes of it, and I'll then point people in the right direction because I want to hear more of your mind and your thoughts. Kelly, roll tape. Let's go. It's so beautiful. I wanted us to play the whole thing, but I, but I'm gonna people. You just have to go and find it. Go to planetmisha.com and you'll see that and, and much much more. It's such a beautiful song, and you. I mean, the rest of the arrangement it just builds and builds. It's 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 stunning. So thank thank you for that. And I want to I want to just use that as a as a, an entree. Can I just say, into... can I just say like honestly, the memories I have of that moment. I can't imagine. Are, they're there's they're they're on par with the memories I have of the Olympics, you know, like on par the first time I sang in Royal Albert Hall, you know, Carnegie. These things I could I could cry by how God has blessed me. Mm. Like I can't believe this has been my life. And my father, man, he really was so proud. Like he was on board. My parents have been on board the whole time. I just wanted to say that it just it, seeing that just brought up so much just humility and pride. I find that, it, yeah, it's, 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 I'm glad you brought it up because I, I think, I think many of us in different walks of lives have, have that, that moment that it, it makes of living be a privilege where you, you realize in that moment, this is special. And, and we're very fortunate in, in, in music that that can happen actually more regularly than maybe in other professions, those moments where you look at a crowd or you look at a stage and you think about what else has happened and it transports you and, and you sense, yeah, you sense something otherworldly in those moments sometimes. Yes. Uh, yes. But I wanted to, I, I wanted yeah. to, 
you, you know, you're speaking from Nova Scotia. You you sang there for a Canadian legend. You are so embedded in the culture of what Canada is now, and you you stand for so much that is great about the culture of Canada. You were on the CBC show. Who do you think you are? And 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 you traced an amazing back to your great 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 grandparents and their arrival in Nova Scotia. And I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit about John and Rose Gossman and whether it's that relationship that is consciously brought you to Nova Scotia or subconsciously or whether it's nothing to do with it. Well, this is the thing. Working from me backwards, raised by Sterling and Ann Gossman in North of France. And my father moves here after he retires from the CBC to go to university for the first time. He becomes a pastor. The whole time, my brother, Neville, Reverend Dr. Neville Gosman is in now Majorville, but he is a career pastor. My father in retirement pastor, my brother first school career pastor, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. So I'm in Toronto or Ottawa or some such place, living my life, living my career. I was in Germany for five years, whatever. The minute I had kids, where is my mother? Like I had Shepherd Peter in Ottawa. So what brought me to Nova Scotia was me wanting to be A in the Maritimes, Right, because mm -hmm. I do not want to read. I do not know how. I in in the city. I, I it's not my language. It's where I work. I would be constantly in work. Like that's what my mind does when it goes to the mm -hmm. city. Because I was raised not in the city, so I knew that I was going to raise my kids in the country. First of all, mm -hmm. and close to my parents, it became an imperative when I had him, and I was like, "Oh no, this is does not work right. without my parents." Right. <laughs> it's like. Who's gonna school you in the stuff? Like, you know, I don't know. <laughs> just had to. So just to work backwards. But we were in New Brunswick for generations. We came up as black loyalists at the end of the 1700s. I read this. This is from the yeah, the show is. And I cannot believe how well researched you are. Alexander Shelley. <laughs> I am so looking <laughs> at this interview. There's such inter interesting questions. Um musically speaking, is an awesome show. Yeah. So thank you, because I mean, I've, I've literally never had anybody say John and Rose Gosman, which were the ancestors on the Shakespeare's really? Manifest, it's, who were written in the Book of Negroes. I know, amazing. It's right? Amazing. It's amazing. And so that's that kind of like a, Hill book. Right. Yeah, right, like that whole Lawrence Hill book with the Giller Prize and the Canada Reads and the all love that they got and all the praise and accolades that it got and deserved and justifiably yeah. received, that is my family's history. Amazing. And so I love it all. Now, I was not interested in any of my genealogy. I had the bubble of my family, mm -hmm. and I did not need to look to nor fro. It was my sister and brother who loved the archives. They both did internships, mm -hmm. summer internships in the New Brunswick archives. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm singing. You know, <laughs> I was like, tell me the stuff. And then a television show comes along yeah. and does the whole job. Because you know I'm not doing that research, Alexander. You know some <laughs> producer is like, blah, 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 act accordingly. And I'm like, oh, really? That's <laughs> And so, uh, but like at the same time, the information is real. Yeah. God's going to bless you mm. how he decides to bless you. He's mm. going to get it to the family and have mm. you understand the legacy of your greatness. Like we had the first school teacher. Like we weren't like raping and pillaging back there. We were foraging new ways of getting education to people. We were strong. Wow. Like, and you know what? Frankly, there was a lapse. And I'm not going to mm. tell you which generation it was, but we needed to be, you know, brought back into really? the truth of who God says we are. Wow. Well, and that it, genealogy thing can, did, did that for us. That was like an interesting thing. That's what this job has done for me. Like, I, I wouldn't yeah, have been yeah. able to do that if I was like, Misha Smith. <laughs> yeah, amazing. And segueing, segueing from that, your Canadianness. You know, how much do you think it shaped your public profile and your personal life? I, it, it's always a weird question, and and maybe it hasn't. But I just wanted to ask it because of the platform we're on, right? <laughs> well, listen. I think, at the risk of sounding xenophobic, which is not my intention, when I say that I love my country. It means that I know what this country does for the people who inhabit it. Mm. If you choose to see and compare, the comparison is valid because we are blessed. When you think globally, 
what this country is, Canada. You know, I mean, just what we represent, just how happy people are when you say you're Canadian. Like that does something. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I, and I know, I mean, I, I love I, that I lived in Germany and I love, I mean, it's still oh. some of the people that uh, I- We need to talk about that, by the way. I was going to leave it to the oh, end. You were the, you were the so Robert Schumann Hochschule and I was there for 10 years and we're roughly the same age. Did we meet there in Dusseldorf? We were there at the same time. I, listen, I'm going to say we did. I, let's start a rumor. <laughs> <laughs> Like, there's a couple kids out know. there we don't know <laughs> we were so strung out in our whole show exactly. <laughs> i want to get on to what you're doing now and and i want to yeah. roll this, the, the 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 teaser from your new album uh just to to give people a sense of what it is and then we'll talk about the coronavirus and how it's affecting our industry okay kelly would you mind playing the sizzle reel from the album is very much a uh, labor of love. Everything is so beautiful about it. Every single song. And songs that I'm familiar with, um, the extraordinary uh, 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 arrangement of the Gershwin and Strange Fruit is really beyond. It's, the, you know, we both sat here saying, well, that's the other version of Strange Fruit now after Billie Holiday's. It's harrowing, but in the best way. part of Planet Misha. Thank you for supporting Misha Jazz. Oh yeah, I'm liking mm -hmm. that. So I want to, I want to, just before we talk about that and the album specifically, I want to take a step back because I, apart from the multi-year friendship we had in Dusseldorf, which we've just created, Definitely. my first memory of us meeting was in, in Caracas. And I think it was like 2009, 2010. Oh and do you remember? And you, you were, um, you were doing a lot of yoga. You looked like the picture of health and yet, and we weren't making music together. We were just in the same hotel. You were doing a project. I was doing a project. And, and yet that must have been around the time that you had your first open heart surgery. So what I want to ask you is 2009, 2019, and then this 2020 Corona crisis, of all the artists in our industry, you have as much experience and, and, and awareness of the, the need to be versatile. Um, talk to us about how those two medical events changed your life, but also how you see the industry now, what we need to do to re-engage. Oh. Beautiful question. Um, and also when you say it all like that in a row, it really makes me emotional um, because it is a lot. I mean, I don't think about it because I'm constantly facing forward because uh, there's nothing in, in your future or behind you except to see how God got you and saved you and made a way for you. And we'll do it again and we'll do it again and we'll do it again, which keeps you moving forward because won't he just keep showing you over and over and over how sovereign he is. So I just... I gotta tell you, like all of those things that reset me. <laughs> I'm not saying that all the paths I were on were the best ones, um, but I'm not saying that they were all bad either. But I do know that uh, man will use for evil, God will use for good. And so every time, and I can say every time I had an open heart surgery because I done had to, um, every time he's blessed me. I mean, I didn't have my kids, you know, I wouldn't, like, if I, I, did, I can you imagine? I mean, I didn't think I was going to die the first time, but I certainly didn't think I was going to die the second time. I was like, nah, and leave these kids, oh, come and try it. You know <laughs> what I mean? And then Corona, and mm. then I get to be with them mm. more, you know, yeah. and I, I know that I'm making kings. I know that I'm growing men. You know, mm -hmm. I am very dedicated and I'm not like a roly poly mom. Like I, mm -hmm. I'm not like making crafts people. Like I'm not like Lego. Don't think that we're out foraging and like, no, I, they're just with me. Okay. Yeah. 
absorbing me. I'm absorbing them. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my best. We barely have an internet connection. Mm -hmm. Please God that you're keeping this connection. <laughs> but, like, we're just, I knew that I needed to be with him in this crucial time because parents, let me hear you, you have like maybe mm -hmm. eight years and then they're good and cooked. And the mm -hmm. rest of the time, everything you tell them is pretty much a suggestion in their mind. <laughs> so until that point, you have to get in and get it getting good. Yeah. And then things change. Mm -hmm. I think, I don't know, mine are seven and five. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know that enough changes happen that I want to steer and make no mistake. I steer. And I know that if you don't, if you weren't there to make the rules, it becomes, it becomes very difficult to enforce them later on. Mm -hmm. At the same mm -hmm. time, I work, you know, I am not with them right now. They're with my mother. Up in the house, like I, I, I don't need to be with them all the time, but they need to know where I am all the time. I think that there's mm. something for them being able to access mm. yeah. all the time. And it's a you blessing know? having your mother there to help you. Yeah, I mean, in this interview, like if one of them was bleeding, this interview would be so over. Like I'd be like, bye, people. Yeah. Like <laughs> or if one of them, like, listen, they wouldn't even have to be bleeding if they were just like, mama, yeah. you know. And but that's the that's the that's the perils of parenthood. You can't mm. not do that. If you like, mm. if you don't lean into parenting, you miss it. And if you lean into it, you're agonizing because you wonder if you're doing enough or if anything you're doing even matters. It's right. never a win. Like you need God in that space because mm. otherwise we're just thinking that we're doing it all in our own strength. And when our strength fails, we feel like well, there's nothing that can be done, but there is something that can be done. You could just give it all to God. Like I just have to daily. I daily, mm. hourly, sometimes, Alexander, it's a minute <laughs> <laughs> negotiation, yeah. you know, with those voices inside our head that are not all good, let's face it. Yeah. They're yeah. not all telling us good things. And so I want to, um, because you've been, you've been alongside mothering in what sounds like the most exceptional fashion, you've also been producing a lot from your home. And you 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 sent me a couple of tracks from your new album and they're just stunning and uh, i was so grateful and you heard the voice of elvis costello you obviously trust a brit right to make i knew he would play him. Yeah. I like, him and i sent him i sent him diana's too but i was like i'm pretty sure he's gonna play elvis <laughs> like, yeah. uh, but, but yes but, yeah, know, it's, I, it's a beautiful yeah. testimonial that he gives you and and uh, you're releasing the, the the songs kind of like one by one on your website. Is that correct? That people can just access every week. Now, this is such a nice thing to be able to talk about because yesterday was very difficult for me because my album didn't end up coming out on iTunes, and it is but uh, it, it is my fault, right? I am self managed. Mm -hmm. I'm an independent artist. I'm really trying to figure these things out. There are these codes mm -hmm. that I have to input that I don't know how to find yet. I, I'm also putting out all of this content, but I did really promise to release one free track every week and that is happening and people Fantastic. will come and the one thing that i wanted for this album was to give it away for free and i that's beautiful i just wanted to have something that was mine you know and i own it and i love it and i get emotional about it because i really want people to know that they can do things that they don't think that they can do i mean it's so dumb yeah. how limited we allow ourselves to stay and so okay so it's not out but that's okay it will be out and it'll yeah. come out at a time that is perfect and you will be given the album for free <laughs> so amazing you and, know, and you can find it on on misha.com and we are doing so i think the little thing that we prepared uh, yes. is a song from the, the track um with a much more exciting and brilliant pianist, but we've prepared a little fun, uh, fun something for our, our audience today. I will Kelly, not we'll, we'll talk we're, about we're my Alexander that way. Don't you talk about him that way. <laughs> now. We're gonna roll this, this little gift for everybody that we prepared for the show, and then uh, we'll, I'll say a big thank you to you. So let's just, uh, let's have a look at it, Kelly, if you could roll it.
So that's a, a little cover. Oh, you sound amazing, Misha. Um, so that's a little cover I that we put think together. The real lead, Alexander, no, listen to me. The lead that was buried here is the fact that you are an amazing jazz pianist. Okay. No one led with that when they asked me to do this here <laughs> little talk. Like, I was like, if they had said that, like, from the get, I would have been like, enough with the rest of your pitch. You said that Alexander Shelley oh, that's is fine. a okay. yes. well, well, so good, so good. I love. We have to do more of that. Oh, thank you. What well, else are we going to do? We have nothing we'll... to do. Let's make an album. We have nothing to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, let's do, let's do another song next time. I, I can't wait. But Misha, I want to, on behalf of, of, of the NEC and on behalf of our audience, just thank you for, for being with us. Thank you for all the positivity and the music and the joy that you put out into the world. Oh, wait, uh, you're, hey, you're... Come, come, here. This is the guy that does all the stuff for me. This is the videographer, Jay Vernon. I just want to give him super love. He set it all hey, up. Hey, I mean, man. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Jay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna do a little outro and now, but it, we love you. You're the most incredible person. Thank you for being with us. Right. Um, Zoe, and a big thank oh my you to the, Zoe. I will. I'll tell her. And tell her I have more oil for her. I have more oil for her. I'll tell her. <laughs> um, a huge thank you to uh, uh, to all the sponsors that make Canada perform such a great platform for so many artists across the country. The National Arts Centre, Facebook, Slate Music, Sirius XM, uh, Sirius XM Canada, 
and RBC. There we are. There's another emergency vehicle bookending this show. Um, I'll be back at the same time. So that's noon uh, East Coast, 5 p.m. in London, 6 p.m. Berlin. It's 9 a.m. in Vancouver and L.A on June 7th with the pianist Jan Leschetsky. Uh, please do check out the NAC website, nac-cna.ca, where there's lots of great content from our musicians on a daily basis. They're putting out such great material. I'm, uh, I'm just loving it and, and so glad that you're able to stay engaged with them. Uh, and you can sign up for our weekly uh, symphony concerts from our archives that we're sending out for free and lots of other stuff. Just visit the NAC website and click on NAC uh, or rather NACO Home Deliveries. And if you join this, uh, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please do follow me on Facebook, Alexander Shelley Conductor, or on Instagram, Alexander Shelley um, uh, underscore Shelley. Um, or at Shirley Conduct on Twitter. Um, and there's lots more musical offerings and interviews and things like that. And most importantly, uh, stay safe, look after one another. Thank you for being with us. Um, and I can't wait to see you again uh, in the virtual world, but hopefully in a concert hall in person in the very near future. Bye-bye, and thank you for being with us.